Hi guys, Doth Savick here with a review for the Kong from Discraft, the prototype Paul McBath, and we're comparing it directly against the current Waisaki destroyers. For the Kongs that we're testing today, I've got a group of six. Top left, that purple one is the flattest top, that's the most understable. And then as we move right and drop down all the way out to this one, it's, this has the most dome on it. These do vary in the height of the dome quite a bit, as you can see in this chart here. That one with the tallest dome is 19.49 millimeters, and the flattest comes down to 15.42. That's really a pretty big difference. If uh, I set up these two calipers here so I can show you the difference between that 19 and the 15 millimeters just give you a quick uh, quick look there that's the difference in height it's really quite a bit I probably don't have the most extreme examples there's probably a few flatter ones and a few more domey than what I've got but it really shows the difference these things are quite stable as you can see in the flight chart that I've put up here as they get flatter they do fly a little bit further and uh, on these two on the end, I'm able to get some turn out of it. Now, as I have this flight chart written here, this is not for me throwing these discs. I have thrown them a lot, um, but I'm injured. I'm not throwing right now. So for this video, uh, I had a friend help me, Tyler. Shout out to Tyler. He was doing a bunch of throws in the field so he could get footage. That's who you're going to see throwing. And he has very similar arm speed to me maybe a touch different release angle. Anyways, it's it's gonna be easy to plug these in and compare them against the destroyers with, with him throwing. Uh, you can also see the difference in, in weight on these, 172 to 174. <laughs> I found that these tend to be heavier than s the stickers say. I had a couple that said, you know, 170 to 172, and then those were weighing in at 173 and 174 for me. So the weights that I've written here are all as I've scaled them. It's a little bit annoying that it's hard to find lighter weight ones. I don't know if that's just the nature of the first run here, release, whatever. Um, you know, they haven't finished this disc, I'm gonna say. I won't be too surprised if it actually gets tweaked a little bit before it, it gets fully released and maybe in lighter weights or after that tweak we'll get some more understable flight out of them anyways arm speed for T Tyler is 60 to 65 um, I had the radar gun out and you know so that it really is same arm speed very similar to what I throw at you can see the distances that these went as well from 336 to 366 and that was pretty consistent he threw a lot of sets with these and you know, we used a uh, a laser to measure to measure distance on them to get accuracy. So I'll go ahead and, and pop straight into the video here. I had him throw a few destroyers as well because we're going to compare them directly. Uh, the the first two destroyers that you're going to see come out are pretty overstable, and then we're going to do the set of six kongs. And then right at the end, you're going to see two more destroyers come out, and those two are understable, just so you have an idea. This first destroyer, let me click right back so you can see it well. Fly straight, dumps hard at the end. Super overstable, 336 feet. Second one's real, real similar. You're not going to see a whole lot of difference there. It does fly a little bit further at 348. And then this is the most overstable Kong. We're just not seeing turn turn out of these things at all, hardly. We did have like just the slightest wind on this day. It was a little bit left to right, maybe touch of headwind. It seemed like it wasn't affecting these at all. We are up at 4,500, maybe 4,600 feet or so here in elevation. So you got to keep that in mind as well. Same arm speed at sea level. These discs are gonna go further. They're, they're gonna be slightly more likely to show some turn just from that difference in elevation. 
Now right here, this one is where we get that kind of baby flex out of it. It just does push right slightly towards that tree, uh, but still finishes super hard. And then we get a baby flex out of this destroyer. It doesn't really turn over, just, just the slightest flex out of it, but it flies so much further than the Kong. That thing went out 396 feet. And then this really understable destroyer, you know, has massive turn out of it, really gets over, but it flies so much further at 423 feet. So I've made a hybrid flight chart. Let me go back quickly and show you the one from the destroyers in the last video. So you can see these two on, on the end here, these understable ones are the two that Tyler through there right at the end. The chart we're looking at is as I threw them in the last uh, video. And, and then the two more overstable ones is this white one here and this kind of purple or burgundy color or whatever. So I took this flight chart that's throwing how I threw those destroyers and then combining it with the flight chart that I made for the Kongs. So my goal here really is to do a series to compare discs to the destroyers. And in doing that, I want to keep putting these flight charts together. Now, I decided that based on how I've thrown the Kongs, that they were going to fit right here in my destroyer lineup. The three most overstable destroyers on the left, and then I split it and add the six Kongs in the middle, and then these destroyers over here. Now, I could also justify splitting these Kongs in half and taking the three most overstable Kongs and putting them on this end, you know, the far overstable end of the spectrum, simply because they're flying not quite as far as these three destroyers. But that's kind of a little bit tricky because these are the distances for Tyler and these are the distances for me, and, you know, we're just, we're just slightly different there. As I throw them, I think this is where they belong. And I'm not sure that that's the most useful slot for most people. It really is going to depend on people's arm speed. But for the most part, if you're talking about a distance driver that you want to use on a golf course for golf lines, I should say, you're likely wanting something that you can throw out on a hyzer and just get a little bit of a flip to flat and then fly near your max distance. So that would be like this blue one for me or this red one over here. I'll even throw this one on hyzer flip lines. You know, as it is in the flight chart, that's on a flat release with a massive turn. But if I put it on a hyzer, then it'll flip to flat and I'll have like relatively little movement left to right uh, with great distance, you know, 400 feet or so. And that's just not something that I can achieve with any of these Kongs. So it makes it tough for me to figure out where the Kong would fit in my lineup. And I'm going to say if you're throwing a mixed bag, it's unlikely that the Kong is going to earn a spot if you've tried very you know, many other discs. I think there's quite a few discs that can beat out the Kong. You know, If you're looking for something that's really stable, a straight flyer with fade at the end, probably throw in a fairway instead, uh, you know, a slightly overstable fairway. I'm just not sure that you need to go up to the 12 speed to get this kind of distance on this kind of flight line. You know, when I'm talking about distance drivers, I really want to see something with, with more flex. So, uh, you know, the Kong's going to be hard to fit in your bag unless you have a much higher arm speed. If you're 65 miles an hour at sea level, great. You'll probably get flex out of them. I'm still not convinced that they're going to fly further than many other discs in this range. If you're discraft only and not throwing a mixed bag, then it's much more likely to have a spot. I feel like it is a pretty similar stability to the Force, but it is a good chunk slower and it has a chunk less glide than the Force. And I don't know all of discraft's lineup that well. I've got to throw some more of their high-speed drivers, but. What the Kong's really got going for itself is that it is great plastic and it's got sweet swirls. Like if I'm comparing it to destroyers in star plastic, 
I, I really like the feel of that ESP. It's a harder plastic. It's got a little bit more shine to it. Uh, you do suffer in that you're losing a little bit of grip, but the swirls are, are so cool. You know, it, Innova's just missing out. They can't get it together and get out, you know, consistent swirls like this. Discraft is doing so well in that way. Um, I think that in general the Kong, you know, I compared it to the Force and slightly slower, slightly less glide, and I think that's fair to say about the Destroyer as well. I feel like the Kong is a, sl a little bit slower and or has less glide. It could be one or the other. I'm not confident enough in that to really say for sure. Yeah, I feel like it's a four glide or that I feel like it's 11 speed. It may be more accurate to say it loses like half a point in both of those. Like it's, you know, 11.5 speed, 4.5 glide, neg one turn, three fade. Um, it, it's, it's somewhere in there. It, it's a little bit you know, it just doesn't fly quite as far as the destroyers when thrown on the same line. Let's see. Let me take a quick look at my notes. What else do I have in here? Okay, I wanted to show, also shout out to Disc Parent. As you guys know, if you've watched some of my other videos, they're helping me out and getting me these discs, including these Kongs that I had for you right here today. And I'm going to quickly jump on their website and go Paul Macbeth, Kong, and 80 per page because I know they have two pages of these. So one of the neat things about their site, in particular if you're looking for Kongs, and as you've seen in my flight chart that their, how much dome they have does change their stability, you can come on here and click like this one. This has got some sweet swirls on it right here. And they've got straight up listed as domey. So not only are they going to tell you the scaled weight, but they're going to tell you what the dome is. And I also like that they have bigger pictures, so you can actually pop these open and like see what swirls are on there. Uh, the next one underneath it, yep, on that one they say pop top. So I know that it's going to even have a taller dome. This one will be slightly more stable than the last one we looked at. And you know you can just come through these and click on them to see how much dome they have. Yeah, here's a flat one. So this one's gonna be less stable than those other two. Um, so I don't know, I think it's pretty cool that they're going to all that extra effort to show how uh, domey their discs are. It really helps when picking stuff like that out. That's all I've got to say about the Kong it's been fun to throw, in particular forehand for some reason. I like it a little bit more forehand than backhand. But distance wise, it's really having trouble keeping up with the destroyers. So I'm looking forward to see if they change, uh, tweak it some more before it goes into full production. And I'll come back and take another look at the disc if they do that. I hope, I hope they will. I'm not sure that the buzz on this disc is going to kind of continue, even though it's got Macbeth's name attached to it. I think the hype is slowly dying down as people are throwing it and realizing what it does. You really got to have a higher arm speed to get some flex out of this disc. And even there, I, I think that you're probably better off throwing some forces or, you know, there's a number of other discs from other companies that fit right in there. So um, feel free to leave me any comments. Let me know what you think about this type of uh, comparison. And if you've got any suggestions, I've got open ears. Thanks for watching.